What's going on everyone? Austin John Plays here and today we're going to be doing a full analysis of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet's Trailer 4. Just a heads up, whenever I'm doing these things, although I am keeping on top of all of the rumors and leaked rumors and everything else that's been coming out, I'm not going to be explicitly discussing that information in these videos because I want to approach this from a more official standpoint and then we could take our ideas from there. But honestly, I'm not giving too much forethought to these leaks and rumors, so we're just sticking mostly with the official information here. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet fourth trailer starts off with a hand-drawn rendition of the Naranja or Uva Academy in the main city of Mesa Goza. And then we have a few screenshots seen at the different angles. In addition, we see the large star icon that we've seen many, many times before, which we're going to learn in this trailer has to do with Team Star. In addition, their warehouse-like campground at the bottom left, a picture of entering the Pokemon League at the top left. On the right, we have a brand new crab Pokemon who is a crab and some other things as well. Also, paper clips. In our first clip here, we see a whole bunch of slow poke and slow bro, and I think the lighting has gotten much better. And right at the beginning of the trailer, we see the three brand new Pokemon that are going to be revealed throughout the trailer. However, only one of them is given a name in the trailer, that being the first one here, Clauf, the rock Pokemon. And then immediately after, we see this guy with the big old crazy torch head. His name is Armor Rouge. And then after that, we see this guy with the big old crazy swords. He is Cerule Edge. This trailer mostly focuses on the three different main story objectives that are going to be present all throughout the game. Here we get a great gameplay clip of what the in-game map is going to be looking like. It's a small pop-up screen that takes about 70-80% of your entire screen, and we can see that you have a big magnifying glass that looks like a Rodom. We see a few different icons of what's presumably various shops throughout the area, as well as all the Pokemon centers that have a small wing icon, presumably since all the Pokemon centers are gonna be fast travel locations. On the left hand side, we see a blue compass icon, presumably that's for the map, which we're currently on, as you see at the top left. Below that, we see red and books, that is your Pokedex, and below that, we have a green icon, which we're assuming is the trainer ID. The plus icon just has a picture of the avatar, maybe this has to do with online features, your current status, and it seems like this clip that we're shown right here is the first town immediately eastbound of Mesa Gosa. It appears as though you're gonna be able to click with your map and set a destination. I don't think we have seen any sort of in-game pop-up of what it's going to be like. Think of Breath of the Wild where you have that large pillar of light that shows where you're going to be going to, as opposed to maybe it's just marked on your minimap. We then see three in-game map pieces. My presumption is that this left one has to do with this first cliff area directly between Mesa Goza and this first town that we're already seeing in that second screenshot. And then this third image over here, I'm kind of guessing that this is actually the starting location marked by the large purple house at the bottom. However, I'm not very certain on this one. I haven't found a location that quite better suits exactly what that is. And perhaps this is what the map looks like when it's zoomed out more, it's less detailed. From here, we see the main objective of this trailer, which is to show us the three different main story objectives. And first we zoom into the right one, which involves Team Star, the rebellious students. This is going to be acting as the evil team of this game. I also love the graph paper at the bottom. I love graph paper. How it works with Team Star is they have several of these compounds throughout the map, according to the texts from the website, and all of them have a certain theme or a different typing. This first one that we're showing off is the fire type Team Star compound. It's also noted on the website that the color of the outfits of the Team Star students are going to be depending on which version of the game you're playing, Scarlet on left, Violet on right. Here we see a clip of what is apparently when the player is going to be entering one of the compounds. The game says that Team Star is going to be throwing out a barrage of Pokemon. I think this clip right here is really, really fascinating. A few reasons. One, you've seen this hound hour and he's getting all small because he's going to be recalled back to a Pokeball. And you're gonna see that the Pokeball comes behind this trainer over here. And then a Fue Coco is thrown out instead. It would appear as though this trainer is either giving instructions to Makuhita or Oricorio over here. So I'm starting to think that you're actually able to take down the compounds with more than one player. 
Perhaps you and up to three additional friends or random people you meet on the internet are going to be able to go into these compounds together. And this is sort of an overworld raid, think about it that way, which seems like a pretty neat concept because the text did kind of seem like you only control one Pokemon in the Let's Go feature and for auto battles. So I'm really starting to think that you're in here and there's other players behind you. Upon here, we see a large hot rod with the leader of this compound of Team Star, and it would appear as though the engine of this hot rod has an eye. And then in official artwork, we see that there's a tongue going through the top of the exposed engine. I don't know the name of an exposed engine on a hot rod. If there's a specific name for that sort of thing on old hot rods, be sure to leave a comment down below. This is the same clip that we've seen before of the hot rod. It's questionable if this is actually a Pokemon or not, or what exactly is going on with that. At the very top of the hot rod is Mila, the leader of the fire compound of Team Star. We see Mila with a quick ball throwing out a Torkoal. Uh, there's not really too much to say about that. Torkoal looks really nice. You see sort of a stone-like pattern on top of it. it. Is said in exact text that you are going to have to defeat not only Mila and her Pokemon, but also the hot rod itself, the Starmobile. Next, we pan away from that and we head to the left-hand side where we see our little crabby boy over here. And we learn about the Path of Legends. Seek out the legendary Hebra Mystica. So this is one of the three main stories that's led with this guy over here. I keep forgetting his name, like literally all the time. Arvin, yes, thank you, Arvin. And he's known about cooking food and other stuff like that. He's a gifted cook, he's an upperclassman, cool. And he goes around and wants to explore various areas. Wait a second. Wait a second. Is that a balloon of a drift bloom? Cause I love it. <laughs> or drift bloom? And you have an Eevee and you have a Premier Ball. It's pretty cool. Anyways, Arvin wants to go around everywhere uh, to the lair of Titans. Now, Titans in German, the language that they use in that exact screenshot is the same as the same language that they used for the totem Pokemon for Pokemon Sun, Moon, Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon, supposedly. So it does appear as though that these Pokemon and the various Titans are going to act a lot like totem Pokemon. We can see Cloth being defeated and then we have a gigantic Cloth hanging on side of this mountain, which makes sense. It, it's Pokedex entry says that it's able to do that, but not for long because all the blood rushes to its head, even though isn't it like all just a head? Anyways, he hops off of there and this is an enormous boy over here. It doesn't have the red fiery eyes like alpha Pokemon do. Instead, it's just a very large Pokemon, just like the totem Pokemon were. On the website, we do see artwork of this battle and it has a large health bar at the top, as opposed to how we've seen the health bars next to the Pokemon or in the top right previously, which would infer that this is actually going to be handled more like one of the terrestrialized dens and less like a regular Pokemon battle. So we'll have to see if you can battle this with your friends or if you can choose to do it one-on-one -on -one, or what the exact situation going on is. One of the large contrasts from how the Titans in Scarlet and Violet is handled versus the Totems in Sun and Moon is handled is that Arvin seems surprised at the size of this Clough, as opposed to in Sun and Moon where it, they were a part of the integral culture of that game. Maybe there's an event going on that is causing these Pokemon to be larger than normal. Also, it's a question if you're actually going to be able to catch them or not, or if you can only defeat them. From here we zoom on out and we've seen both ends and now we're going to be moving on to the middle Polaroid which actually has to do with Victory Road and the gym leaders. Now this clip right here we don't know if this is actually Victory Road or if this is just one of the many gym leaders. I think it's just one of the regular gym leaders as on the map we did see eight of the exact same building that look like this from the back and it, let me find one from the front. There we go, that's what it looks like from the front. And yeah, I would say that's that one-to-one. -one. And my prediction still remains that this large circular building right next to Mesogoza is still going to be the actual location of the Elite Four, or sorry, Victory Road and the Champion Assessment, as it's called in this game. We see an adorable greed on advertisement of him eating <laughs> him eating a, uh, a big old cupcake on the side. Oh yeah, this is Gita. She is apparently like, the number one champion, since there are many champions in this game, and it's just having the rank of champion as opposed to there's only one champion. Maybe Gita is like the spokesperson poster child of the champions. The chairwoman, there we go, the chairwoman. That's the word I was looking for. 
Nimona being your friend who likes to battle, you meet her very early in the game and she teaches you how to battle and how to do Pokemans and stuff. Nimona says, came to see this gym, so we would presume that this is our first look at the interior of what the actual gyms look like. Clean, modern, sunkern, cool. Now we get our first look at one of the gym tests. If you played Pokemon Sword and Shield and you remember what the gym challenge is, it would appear as though this is a similar concept. And here for the grass type gym, you have to seek out the sun flora of Artisan. Artisan is presumably the name of this town, and I'm still sticking with that. It's the town directly to the east of Mesagosa. That's a big old pool. There was no fences around that pool. That's very dangerous for Pokemon to just wander into. It's pretty cool running with the sun flora. Yeah, between the very large pinwheel that is present and the color of the different houses and the steps to this main central area, I'm going with 100% that this, the grass type gym, is going to be this town directly to the east of Mesa Goza, the large city. Especially with all those clean hedges going on. Yeah, this is this, is this 100%. Knowing that, I have a feeling in the opposite direction, heading west from Mesa Goza, as you know it's an open world game, you can go any way you want. This gym leader, who is in front of all the different olive bushes and everything else, it's possible that this is a ground or rock type gym. Because, you know, if you have the grass type starter, you probably don't want to go against the grass type Pokemon. And if you have the water, you don't want to go against the grass type Pokemon. Instead, you can go here. And if it's ground or rock, you're going to be super effective. But if you pick Fue Coco, you could come over here and be super effective. So one of your first choices as your journey begins is which gym you want to go against for your type advantage or disadvantage. And here we see the gym leader of Artisan, the grass type gym leader, Brassius, who he holds a hose. And, and it's like linked on his belt. Uh, hoses are not very light things. That's a very heavy thing to hang from his pants, just saying. Anyways, he has his small of, and one of the most interesting things I think in this entire trailer that we've seen is that Brassius is gonna be sending out a pseudo Wudo. Pseudo Wudo comes out, beautiful textures on pseudo Wudo, by the way. Actually looks like wood instead of rock, which is pretty neat. Now you see Brassius terastalize his pseudo Wudo to make it into a grass type, which just kind of opens the door that these gym leaders aren't restricted to their exact type of Pokemon anymore. They can have whatever type of Pokemon that they want. You literally, you can go to the water type gym and it's a Charizard and the Charizard's now a water type. So think about that. So here we see Pseudo Wudo use Trailblaze, which I don't think we've ever heard of the move Trailblaze before. As we know, the normal type move called Terra Blast, which is a regular TM that everyone can learn, is taught to pretty much every single Pokemon. And when you use Terra Blast with, say for example, a grass type terrestrialization, it's going to be Terra Blast, but it's a grass type. It doesn't actually change its name. So we're gonna have to see what's going on with that. It was probably just a new move that we learned. From here, we see several in-game screenshots of the actual map in different areas. On this screen of all the various maps, the only one thing that really stands out, if we were to look at this top left map here, we have an icon that kind of looks like, I would say like a sheriff's badge. And while I could go through and analyze where all of these map scenes are, it's not really that helpful if I'm being honest. But if I were to line up what that sheriff's badge is, it would line up with the location of this tower down here right next to the grass town. And I already forgot the name, Ara... Ara Arizona over here, we have this tower here and it would appear as though that appears as this large sheriff's badge on this map. Now, what these towers serve, we truly don't know the full extent of it or its purpose. So we're gonna have to wait and see if they act as a way to survey the area, get additional information, fast travel points. At this point, we pretty much know that all the Pokemon centers are fast travel points, but what else? We don't know. As the video continues, it zooms out further and we see two different colors that we've never seen before. One of these is a stripe between a darker blue and a lighter blue. Perhaps this is ocean that you can't travel in as seen in this small map image down here. But then also we see this very faint blue image here, which we could assume this is shallow water. So we're gonna have to see exactly how traveling on water plays out. If that shallow water is just this massive lake here at the top, I'm hoping 
hoping that this is going to act more like Breath of the Wild, that we've only seen the Great Plateau and we truly don't understand the full scale of everything going on here. And I'm excited for that. Coming into the tail end of the trailer, we see a few more clips of riding around your co-ride-on and my ride-on. We see the Paldean whoopers and a Gumi hanging out. We see our new little monkeys, Grafii, chilling. Now this is an interesting thing here. We see our player on its co-ride-on and then a Cyclozar just chilling, chasing behind it. My original assumption was that Cyclozar is our common Pokemon, but only through possibly an early in-game story event you get access to Co-Ride-On or My Ride-On. Think of the same extent as like seeing Tapu Koko at the beginning of Sun and Moon and then being able to ride on Tauros. Like that sort of extent of how the game plays. Maybe you start with the Cyclozar and then an event happens and then it evolves into that. But here it seems like while you are on your ride Pokemon, you are going to be able to have your following Pokemon travel with you, which kind of expands the possibilities for the let's go feature and the auto battle feature, which seems pretty interesting. Here we see a whole bunch of Pokemon just hanging out behind the trainer. We have seen them throw out the Pokemon before. This is a similar concept to how it executing a Pokemon Legends Arceus. However, we still don't know the full extent of it because we haven't had an official name like Pokemon Camp, if you're gonna be able to cook here or if this is involved in the breeding mechanic or what exactly is going on has yet to be fully flushed out. But they are one once again teasing it. From here the trailer ends with Armor Rouge and Cerule Edge. Just kind of chilling. These Pokemon, I'm going to presume, evolve from the same one Pokemon and they are version exclusives. So Armor Rouge is going to be only in Pokemon Scarlet and Cerule Edge is only going to be in Pokemon Violet. I already chose Violet because I think my Rhydon is cooler than Co-Rhydon, but you know, you do you. If you want, if you want the little runny boy, that's that's up to you. And that pretty much sums up all of the trailer, which I'm getting pretty excited for this game. There's still a lot that we don't know, and they're kind of spoon feeding us information every what is this? two, three weeks or so, and I'm kind of liking this pace. You know, it's keeping us engaged, entertained. It's not just giving away all the information in one fell swoop, so I, I like how they're approaching it, for real. Anyways, guys, if you're enjoying the content here and the coverage of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button down below. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing, maybe even turn on notifications. Until next time, Austin John out.